Awesome. Well, I am delighted to be here. And uh, I understand I am uh, between you and probably a bunch of other things that you have lined up for the rest of the day. So I'll uh, try and get through some of the stuff. Uh, my name is Neeraj Mathur, and uh, I am here to talk to you about how product and design can uh, best collaborate. Um, why should you listen to anything that I have to say? Well, I've been in the industry for over two decades uh, with a bunch of different startups and enterprises, have gone through different verticals, have had the opportunity to work hardware and software and software. I've also been very, very fortunate uh, to have led varying sizes of uh, PM and design teams, not only just at startups, but also at large enterprises, uh, dealing with remote uh, situations, as well as dealing with uh, all kinds of different personalities that these two functions actually bring together. I wanna share some of the things that I've learned over the years, and I've actually been able to uh, learn from and deploy at some of the teams that I've led. First things first, you probably heard this a zillion times. Product building is a team sport. There isn't a time when you can actually see a, any different particular product that's out there in industry that has been just been done really excellently done well. And it's just been a contribution of either just the product manager or just the designer, or for that matter, the third leg of this tool usually is engineering. So ensuring and understanding going in that we are going to be part of a team to deliver value to our users, to deliver value to our customers is extremely important. What does team sport bring? Team sports, typically when you go down the path, everybody's got a particular role. They have a responsibility. Irrespective of the sport you are playing, irrespective of the team you're a part of, very quickly, everyone's gonna say, I'm gonna be in this role. And by being in that role, there's gonna be certain amount of responsibilities that come with it. However, there is another aspect to this, is the skills. You may have a specific role, you may have a certain responsibility, but you bring in certain skill sets with you to that particular role. And the, the greatest teams understand each other's roles and responsibilities, but also know and have awareness of what skills does this person, does this role have that I can leverage and use to the advantage of the overall larger team, or that will allow me to be able to grow and build something better for the overall customer, the overall end user. Having clarity on who's going to play where, having understanding of who's responsible for what particular item, and having a very good grasp on skills is extremely important to be able to put the best foot forward and have the best team available for you to start moving forward in the right direction. PM and user experience design is an equal partnership. It is actually like rowing. If you have one piece that is not working the right way, then rest assured, there might be a lot of action, but the progress, the value that the end user is gonna see is not gonna be most optimized. So product and users, depending on who you are, which role you are in today, understand that it's an equal partnership. I've often heard over the years, should user experience report to product managers? Should user experience be a function of its own? Should product manager own product? All of these things fundamentally I disagree with. PM and UX are two partners that should work hip joined by the hips, making sure that they understand and are understand the user's needs extremely well, understand the business needs extremely well, and are able to make sure that they are rowing the boat in the same direction to deliver extreme and immense value to the end user. You've probably also heard about the fact product owns what, when, why. The product also owns uh, the ability to tell UX, here, you go do certain things. You've also heard from UX practitioners who will say, we are also responsible for what, and by the way, we are also responsible for defining the how. Some of it is true. There is a very clear overlap. And because of this overlap comes the need to where conflicts arise, where there might be a little bit like, oh, do you own this or do I own this? Let's make sure that that is very clear. PM has the responsibility of the why and when, UX has the responsibility of how, but they together own the what, and it is an iterative process. It's not something that a product manager goes talks in their own vacuum to a bunch of customers, brings that probably some with the skills of being able to design mockups will go out and say, 
here, you go pretty it up. That is a very, very incorrect way of engaging that is actually lack of understanding what design brings to the table. It is way more than pixels. It is way more than mockups. There is a whole lot of study and advantage that a product manager can avail by bringing the user experience folks and the team members with them alongside the discovery process of some of this. So yes, there is overlap. And yes, that overlap leads to sometimes conflict. However, you overlaps can be actually used extremely well to our advantage in keeping the focus in mind on the, end, the delivery that we owe to the end user, to the business. All that sounds good. Well, let's start from a perspective of how might we actually be able to do that? Engage early and often, whether you're coming from a product manager, uh, management function or you are a user experience practitioner. Engaging with your counterpart really early. How could a product manager do that? The moment you have an idea, flesh it out, understand what exactly is the business problem you're trying to solve. And as soon as it is a little crystallized and it's more than a thought or an idea in your head, go and have that first conversation of discovery with your UX uh, partner to kind of understand, hey, where do you sit this? Can we start at least marinating on this to understand what options might be available? I've often heard this, this is a, a large company or small, a product manager is like, I don't wanna disturb this UX person because they're busy with their delivery. And that notion of that they're busy with the delivery goes to sometimes speak to the effect of they are not just responsible, designers are not just responsible for delivery, they're also responsible for strategic effort. User experience folks sometimes say, I have not really thought this through yet. I want to really make sure my design is close to 100% before I share it was with the product manager. No, please don't do that because what allows for a, yes, be again from the principle of having it crystallized from the principle of having a little more than thought through that you have just an idea in your head, share the early stuff with the, with the product guys and or other folks in, the, uh, in your team to start getting more feedback to make the design better. Requirements better understanding that we are defining the right problem and we are refining the problem as we go along comes only from engaging early and often with our counterparts. Identify and play to, your, to each other's strengths. It is extremely important. Product managers come from very different functions these days. It's not just all our technical grads, thankfully. Uh, uh, not all are just coming from arts background, not all are quants. They come from different backgrounds. Understanding each other's skill sets is gonna be extremely important so you can leverage uh, the strengths that this person have and be complementary to it rather than looking at it as a uh, me versus us versus them sort of a notion. Similarly, from a user experience standpoint, understanding for a product manager, what are the strengths of this uh, user experience or design person that I'm engaged with? Are they really excellent at UX research? Are they really brilliant and doing a lot of very quick iterative prototypes? Or are they just an amazingly brilliant designer from a visual perspective? Identifying those uh, key strengths and then leveraging them to your advantage for making a really stellar product is crucial and essential for everyone. We all talk about empathy and we build empathy product or uh, design, um, build empathy with the user, but sometimes we forget that the first order of building that deep empathy starts with each other. Understanding where the other person's coming from, looking at variety of options that have been put together, sometimes even questioning where those decisions have actually come from, making sure that the communication is very, very clear and direct, because that's how you start to unravel all the other things that may come up. So building that deep empathy with each other is uh, increasingly important as well. Listen with intent. I have often seen this happen in either a sprint review or a design review, or sometimes even requirements review. The other person is just kind of waiting for the, if, if the PM is presenting, designers waiting to, for them to finish and be able to bombard them with questions. Or when a design review is starting to take place, PM's like, wait, 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 tell me about why did you choose pink color or green color? Understanding or invading to make sure that you're listening with intent to understand is critical because what you really want during these kinds of conversations to work and collaborate with each other 
is to get those multiple perspectives out because that will aid and ensure that the product that is getting built, the features that are getting built are much more better and much more useful and valuable uh, to the end user. Going to that extra layer of understanding and making sure that you're asking where are some of the decisions that have been made coming from is, is really crucial. Learn and educate. It's extremely important. Making sure that you're not questioning the intentions, uh, but your probing uh, questions are about the decisions that are been made. For example, why are we doing this feature set in this particular order? Or how have you come up with these items on your roadmap? What are the underlying business guidelines to be able to asking uh, to be looking at this particular order? Those are all very valid questions to ask of a product manager. Similarly, for a product manager, it is good to ask about how did you go about making sure that this workflow, that this process that you outlined for the user to accomplish a task, how did you arrive at that? Instead of questioning the, uh, the, uh, the person, question the decisions or probe the decisions so that you can get a better understanding an idea of how a particular decision was arrived at. You have a better understanding of the inputs that led to a particular output, eventually driving towards the outcome that you both together, both PR product and design, want to drive towards a delivering for, for the end user. We all are working in an agile environment. We have heard and talked a lot about iterations. However, often it happens that we're not really fluid and adaptive to each other. Uh, continuous learning is not just for building our product. Continuous learning is also for teams. It's also for these functions to learn from each other and be able to adapt to either the people, the functions, and continue to provide a meaningful feedback so that the team starts to become stronger and much more uh, powerful as they actually move forward. Every, I'm not sure how many people actually do it, although it's, it's uh, required and recommended, having some sort of an introspection between product and UX, and because this is focused on product and design, uh, even engineering, making sure that there is a very fluidity, there is fluidity in our conversations, crisp and clear communications happening on an ongoing basis to ensure that we are iterating not just our relationships, but understanding our work processes to make sure that we are bringing value, most value out of each other, and again, having the focus of delivering most value to the, to the end user. Our goals have been very similar. Everyone, whether you ask a product person or you ask a designer, they always are looking to deliver excellent products that vows the end users each time. They find it valuable, they find it sticky, they identify that and we feel a sense of delight when they're actually trying to finish a particular task. When the goals are aligned, it makes the job even more easier However, it all boils down to making sure that there is crisp, crisp understanding of roles and very, very clear communication uh, that takes place. If I was to leave you with uh, a quick understanding of few bits that you could take from today and see if you can apply it to your, to your teams and to your uh, organizations, is making sure that product and design are more like Batman and Robin that are the dynamic duo who understand each other's roles and skills very clearly. They start from the position of being a partner, equal partner at all points of time, know each other's skills and therefore can play to each other's strengths, are communicating very, very clearly, adapting and iterating constantly and making sure that they're learning from each other and educating each other about themselves as they go through the process. I went through this really quickly because I am very interested, uh, Scott, in actually taking as many questions as I can uh, and bring some real life experiences to, uh, to help people kind of exchange, uh, share my experiences and drive and see what I could help them with. But sure. last bit, every great product, there's great collaboration between a product manager and designer. Well said, well said, good way to wrap it up. Um, we'll leave uh, some time here for people to ask any questions that they've got uh, for you, Nirj. I guess in the meantime, maybe I'll get started with a couple uh, as we've done on some of the other panels conversations here. Um, I guess what I'm super curious about is uh, you talked about the partnership obviously here between design and product manager. What does that partnership look like between product manager and the engineer and product manager designer and the engineer as a triad? Yeah, so um, 
I look at this as a three-legged stool. And to be a sitting and to have a balanced uh, top, you got to make sure that all these three legs are equal uh, arrangement and equal uh, setting uh, for, for a stool to really stand up and be really, really fat and comfortable. And from a product and engineering, so I fundamentally believe that this notion of handoffs, uh, particularly in the agile environment that we are in these days, moving fast, iterating quickly, that's a misnomer. We are constantly iterating and handoff is more like a soft delivery. It's not like a baton that you hand off and the other person's go, gonna do their leg. That's very waterfallish. We used to do that. We know that doesn't work. It's more like you're running together and making sure that you're just handing off a little bit, come back, iterate again, and keep moving forward. So from a partnership standpoint, it will be product, engineering, and design must be very tightly aligned at all given points of time to make sure that the what, why, how is very tight to drive value to the end user. Yeah, that's a great, great point. Um, so we've got one question here from Hallie. Uh, in design reviews, do you have a set of questions you usually like to ask designers? Um, you mentioned a few, wasn't sure if you had any more questions you'd like to ask particularly. Yeah, um, there, there's a, uh, that's a very good question. Thank you. I look at more as not really questioning, but more about discovering. That mindset has allowed me, and I've learned this having worked with some very stellar designers over the course of the years, that allows to actually get more rationale behind some of the thinking. So for example, uh, if we are having a review about a certain capability or a feature, I always want to see from my perspective, what was the persona that was used if we are early in the product, if the persona is not clearly known, or if there are multiple personas, which persona is actually being uh, walked through a certain process. So asking the designer about what problem were we trying to solve? Make sure, even though everybody may know it, it's very good to remind everyone that's the problem we are trying to solve. So you anchor the conversation around it. Second, set some very guidelines. Am I looking at a, when it's a design review, am I commenting on the process? Am I commenting on the actual visual? Or am I just looking at a mock-up and I should forget everything about what's being there, whether the text is placeholder or this or that? Getting that outline from the get-go, make sure that the design process, design review process goes really smoothly because the designer may not have actually gone through all the, the text yet. And if you start commenting on the button needs to have this text and that text, that process has gone down the, the uh, that's not gonna be most optimal to say to begin with. So some of those baselines. And then once you have those baselines set, ask about how did you arrive at this decision? If you've chosen a certain, so you chose a wizard that is of this type versus actually going through uh, maybe two or three step process. Why is it a five step process? Having those probing questions allows the designer to come out and be able to say, here's what I learned from my user research or here's what I learned in my questions or here's where I saw how this could be most optimal and then go through the process of reduction. Just like as a product manager, you will go through a process of prioritization you go through a process of reduction with designers saying, okay, do we really need this? Can we shorten it? And keeping in mind again, what I said, what problem are we trying to solve? Because once you anchor back to that, that allows everyone to say, okay, I see what, where the anchor is and now I can keep going back to that. And by the way, designers should do that too with the product managers. I'll tell you, experienced designers will actually very quickly take the product manager back saying, um, good point. However, this is the problem we are trying to solve now. You've gone down the deep end that's not what we're talking about right now. Yeah, that's great. I know you recently have made a bit of a transition in your own uh, work and day-to-day -day career and, and are now involved in much more of your own startup. And I'm kind of curious on, I guess, how these experiences are beginning to manifest themselves or show up in terms of the growth of that small organization and the building of your new product. Yeah, excellent. Um, I'm actually very, very... Um, happy that I've gone through the experience of working at larger teams, smaller teams, one product, one design, one product, no design, uh, or someone contracted or whatnot. Um, we are making sure from my perspective as we uh, take Savings Oak to the next level is that culture of collaboration, not just between product and design, but across other functions is there. 
UX or experience design or however you want to call it is not a department. It's a fundamentally responsibility of the entire organization and needs to be a priority from top down. So that not only is it a matter of enabling designers to challenge business decisions, it is also a matter of making sure at the end of the day, it's like the Toyota model, everyone should be able to stop it. If we are always going to say, let's just get this done for MVP and we'll come back to it later, frankly, that later never happens because if you don't have enough time to do it right the first time, let's just be very clear, you're never gonna have enough time to do it right the next time. Yeah. So from that standpoint, building that culture, that experience really matters, particularly in the space that we are in FinTech, people are so jaded and there's so much to learn that if we don't deliver a stellar experience from the get-go, it's going to be very hard. We'll just be one other thing rather than be the thing that actually helps solve some of the complex problems. Yeah, that's a great point. Great point. I know uh, Haley's got a little bit of a follow-up here. If you can get a little bit more into the, they're busy, I don't want to bother the mindset you talked about. Maybe something you could share on that side and how you balance essentially uh, communicating early and often with distracting them from the work they actually need to get done. Yeah. Um, Point number one, um, all great engineering teams, engineering leaders and engineers always come up with saying, I do have 40 hours a week, but that's not all the time I have. I can only work for 25 or 30 hours. Every team kind of sets up with that because rest of everything is gonna get filled with um, meetings and issues and production issues and what have you. I strongly recommend product managers as well as designers to carve out certain amount of their time for these so-called one-offs or meetings or something, it's gonna happen. If you don't factor it in your day, in your work week, it just makes it really hard to be able to bring that in. Having that fixed hour sometimes, I have done this in a large company. Um, many years ago, I was responsible for a team of about solid 40, 45 people team, uh, PMs and designers. We had a designated hour at the bottom of the day uh, not during the mornings and not during the afternoons, but at the bottom of the hour where it was an open session. If you have something that you want to run by a designer or a designer wants to run by PM, there was an opportunity to go collaborate. Those sometimes became structured meetings uh, to be because there were more people involved or sometimes it was just me walking down to the other building and talking to the design team saying, hmm, this is what I learned today. Here's some things what we've built. What do we do about the situation? Yeah. Structuring your day structuring your time, finding that common uh, uh, time that allows you to know that I'm going to be pinged at this time. So let me not pick something up that's gonna be required for deep thinking uh, would be useful. Okay, that's great. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna give Pradeep, our good friend Pradeep, the last question. He, he asked it in our, in our chat, um, but like, what are some of your favorite design resources? What are some of my favorite design resources? Wow, that's a... That's a well, people. Question, eh? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm very fortunate. There are certain people that I've worked with. I often go to them for advice. Um, it, it depends what you're looking for. Um, but Pradeep, thanks for the question. Um, when I think about if I'm looking for certain help, I mean, as a product person, if I want to have a meaningful conversation with a designer, I go do a little bit of research on a certain topic, either on Nielsen or so many other people uh, uh, who write about design and actually, I don't wanna quote one and then for, uh, forget other ones and then get in trouble. Um, but it going to standard resources that are being published, there are a lot of other designers who actually talk about it. I also look very aggressively on uh, platforms such as Dribble and what have you, where new ideas are always being shared that allows me to have a some sense of having a conversation the idea for me to go to a designer is to make sure that I know just about enough to be able to understand that terminology and mm -hmm. be able to provide my uh, thoughts in a coherent manner, in a language that a designer will be able to grok and uh, understand faster. Because that's the other part of building a collaborative relationship is making sure you understand each other's terminology, language, uh, be transparent, because once you have those two, then it leads to trust, which is the basis of being having a very collaborative uh, relationship. 
And as a reminder too, if you're found today helpful, we also have another great event coming up in October on how to run product at scale, which is our product excellence summit here at product board and I encourage you to check that out as well. There's information as well on the uh, product makers community for that.